Evening guys, it's Treggs here, founder of 30 Plus Men's Fitness. Hope you're all doing good. All right, so um, <clears throat> we are now middle of November. No two ways about it. Christmas is around the corner, okay? And unless you're in my members club, like Paul, who's just said hello, hey Paul, or doing the dialect in, in plan, then you may now be thinking, uh, sod it, I'm going to start in the new year. Okay, that's your prerogative. You know my thoughts on that, and I'll go over that again in a bit. But what I want to do tonight is give anybody that may watch this, or anyone you go and tag in, because I know a lot of the people that are just joining, they're finishing the year on high because they're in my plans and they're feeling good. But there's going to be people out there, like these videos reach a lot of people. There's going to be video, there's going to be people out there that have just blown it this year. And now is a time to reflect. Hey, hey Ryan, good stuff, mate. Now is a time to reflect, and I think... I can hopefully give you some insights is into why you may have failed again this year because we've all done it. I've been that new year, new me douchebag. Here's what I see a lot of in the new year. People like new year, new me. I see people miserable at Christmas. Oh, I've just, I just can't wait for the new year now. Fresh start. You can have a fresh start every day by getting up and just making better choices, right? So this whole new year, new me thing, that I want you to first thing understand is that's a disordered way of thinking. That's like breaking your diet on a Thursday and then going, I'll start again Monday and binging like crazy on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How do I know? I've been that guy, right? I've been that guy in the past that has got to December and thought it's Christmas. Even in my early days of being a personal trainer and just walking down the aisles in the supermarket, smashing chocolates, you know, drinking every night in the spirit of Christmas and then waking up on Christmas Day miserable. All right. So kind of going off topic here slightly, but lots of people are going to be getting to New Year's and going, right, these are my New Year's resolutions. For a start, don't make resolutions, set goals. OK, I can assure you there are people that are going to be like, New Year, New Me, I laugh at it. I don't mean it in a horrible way. It's just that you've got to, how can I put it? Like, you can get up every day. You can get up every day and move more, make a conscious effort. Trust me, at Christmas, I'll be eating and drinking more and I'll just be moving more. I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be doing my live workouts. Plus, we've got a dog now, more excuse to get out, get for a walk. So here's what I want you to think if you failed this year. What was your plan? What was your plan at the start of the year? Okay. Um, because if you haven't achieved it, then something's gone wrong. So you may have come up with an idea of, um, I'm going to do a super restrictive diet. Okay. Now, you know my take on things. I've evolved quite a lot. So was it too restrictive? Because here's the thing. A lot of people will be going out in the new year. Right. I'm going to cut carbs. I'm going to train every day. I'm going to cut alcohol. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. If you've been acting like a pig over Christmas and eating crap and drinking and all that kind of thing, for you to say all those things is a big mistake. Like, don't get me wrong. I personally think it's easy to go dry in January because a lot of us drink at Christmas, okay? But, you know, for, to, to then go, I'm going to train every day. I'm going to cut carbs. I'm going to do this, right? It's not sustainable, okay? So I want you to think about this year. What's happened? Why did you fail, okay? Was it because you imposed too much of a restriction on yourself, too much of a restriction on yourself, all right, in terms of how you were going to do it. I'm going to go ketogenic. I'm going to cut carbs. I'm going to do train gym, all this kind of thing. If it was too restrictive, your adherence is going to go through the floor. Let me talk to you about adherence, right? Do you know that the biggest factor in any diet is anything, forget any strategy you, you decide to use, is adherence. What do I mean by that? It's being able to stick to it, all right? Now, there is a lot of these gurus out there that are telling you to only organic. You must eat, you know, real foods. This Don't get me wrong. I want you to eat 80%, 85% clean, right? You know, my meals today have been loads of greens, fish, and, and stuff like that. I've had fresh air. I've been out. I've trained. I've had a bar of chocolate as well. Um, and the kids had a few Doritos. I, I factored them in. I don't impose those restrictions on myself because I know how I, am, how I react to those restrictions. I'll binge. I've had issues with in the past. So adherence, so I can adhere to this, this lifestyle, flexible diet is what it's called. So I fit things in which might be deemed junk into my diet whilst eating 85% clean. I can adhere to that, it's no problem. 
Last night, on a Tuesday night, I had half a lager. Half a fucking lager. It's a revelation. Why? I found a can in the fridge. I fancied half a lager. Now, in the past, I would have gone, I've had a can of lager. I may as well have a couple more. And now I've blown my diet by having beers on a Tuesday. I'm going to start again next Monday and do an obscene amount of damage in the rest of the week. That's disordered. That's disordered. With an understanding of flexible dieting and with a better relationship with food, I can have half a lager and leave it there. And, it, and it's nice. It's a great place to be in, but it, but it doesn't happen overnight. So adherence is key. Now, people tell you, oh, you can't have sugar. You can't have this. You can't have that. If you lose weight, if you lose weight and you consistently lose weight, all of your health markers will improve. Ta-da. Okay. So whether you eat quote unquote clean, 100% of the time or not, if you lose weight, your health markers improve. Okay. So I've got clients now that have just had a blood test, got a client who was virgin on pre-diabetic and, you know, we've been taking on a little bit of a journey and she's been using a flexible diet approach rather than going too clean and just going super low carb like everyone recommends. And her blood markers have improved. Why? Because she's been able to adhere to the to the diet plan that I've given her. So yes, we want you to eat well, we want you to eat good foods, but remember, if you can't stick to 100% clean eating, and you can only stick to it 30% of the time, and the rest of the set time, 70%, you're off the wagon, wouldn't it be just be better to be 75%, 100% of the time? Because if that sees you consistently lose weight and your adherence is that much better, okay, then you're not ever gonna fail. Does that make sense, okay? So I want you to think about it. Did you impose too much restrictions on yourself this year? That could have been one of the reasons why you failed. Think about that. Now, secondly, here's another one. Did you reverse engineer your goals? What do I mean by that? So I have clients come steaming in the new year. I'm going to lose four stone this year. Okay, cool. Tell me how you're going to do it. Okay. So what we mean by reverse engineer is you pick a date that you're going to do something. Okay. So at the start of the year, my first big challenge was Europe's toughest mother. That was me. Okay. So what I do is I go to the date of the event and then I work back how many weeks I've got to prepare for that race. What weight do I want to be? Okay. So how many weeks have I got to get down to that weight? If I'm carrying a little bit of extra timber from Christmas, you reverse engineer. So if I've got a client that comes in and says, I want to lose four stone this year. I don't know who said that. It's probably Anthony or Russ or Matt. I always do this. I want to lose four stone this year. Well, let's look at it. There's a 14 pounds in a stone. So that's 28. That's 56 pounds. That's 56 pounds I want to lose in a year. Okay. So 52 weeks in a year, you're looking at just over a pound a week. So now you've reversed engineer. Here's the year. I want to lose this much weight. Now you know what you've got to do on a weekly basis. Does this make sense? So people are just throwing numbers in the air. I want to lose this much. Well, hang on. When do you want to lose it by? Okay, let's, so let's, let's get that date. You know, it could be six months, nine months, 12 months. Okay, now let's work backwards from that date. Okay, let's set this goal and work backwards and understand it's not always going to be linear, but we know the date we want to be. So at the start of the year, um, for me, it was Europe's toughest murder. Right, Europe's toughest murder, I want to be as close to 13 and a half stone as possible. I think I, I ran it at 39. Straight after Christmas, you know, I was about 14 stone five. So I knew I had to lose about 10 pounds in that time. From January to May, not a problem. But I still looked at it and went, right, by this date, this is where I need to be. Nice and uh, lean, nice and trim and ready to roll because it's eight hours through the night. And that's what you do. Same with the four and four half marathons. Right, when's the first one? First one's middle of September. Okay, so let's reverse engineer. What's the date now? It's May. Okay, so I've got 16 weeks. What do I need to do over the 16 weeks to help me to achieve this goal? Most people are literally just saying, I'm going to do this. Well, you're not, you've got to reverse engineer it. So have a think about it. I hope this gives you some value because if I say reverse engineer to a lot of clients, they kind of go, what does that mean? Now you know, okay? So whenever that goal is, whenever that date is that you want to achieve it, let's start to work backwards. Because you might find some people, some people like uh, said to me, I want to lose four stone in the first part of the year. You know, if I just go 26 weeks hard and I go, well, hang on a second, you know, you're looking at losing, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but two, three pounds a week. That's aggressive. All right, fine. I, I'm, I've got no problem with people doing aggressive dieting for maybe four weeks. You ain't going to sustain that for six months because life's going to get in the way. So two things. 
Why did you fail? You imposed too much of a restriction on yourself. Okay, so your adherence went through the floor. Number two is um, you didn't reverse engineer. So you had no plan. How can you, you can't just get up and go, this is what I want to do, but you've got no plan. So secondly, when it comes to the plan, it needs to be adaptable. It got to be adaptable. You've got to be able to roll with the punches. So I see people come steaming into the gym in the new year. I'm going to train five days a week's treks. We're going to do this, going to do this, going to do this. Miss a session, they feel like they failed. So this is why I'm not a massive fan of like the split body part routine. Like Monday is chest, because international chest on a Monday. Tuesday might be back, Thursday shoulders, Thursday, uh, Friday legs, all that. But as busy guys, what happens if we miss a session and we've missed the body part? So you've got to have a plan that you can roll with. You have to have a plan. So if you if you mess up, there's no guilt attached to it, okay? You know you can adapt. So a lot of the guys I work with, um, they all get four workouts a week um, and they can fit that in whenever they want. It's not like you must do this this day and you must be in... And you must be in a fasted state. You must do this to stay. No, it's got to be adaptable. So, so let's look at it now. Moving into 2019. Don't impose massive restrictions on yourself, okay? Number two is um, reverse engineer. And then number three, have a plan which is adaptable. And not just in terms of the training, but in terms of the calories. This is why I'm a massive fan of flexible dieting. So with flexible dieting, you work out your calories per day. You can do that over on our website, okay? based on your activity, your height, your weight, your sex, and your um, your age, okay? Now, what that will then do is it'll allow you to work out a calorie deficit uh, per day in order to achieve your goal weight, okay? Now, what I like to do is rather than just look on that as, as one day per week, okay? So here's an example, okay? I look at it over seven days. So we, then we can do things like calorie borrowing, okay? So over seven days, let's say for example, just to make it easy for the sake of my maths, you're on 2,000 calories a day. That's 14,000 calories a week. Some people might go over one day and go, I've blown it. I had 3,000 calories on Saturday. I went out for some beers. Hey, look, no worries. You have now got um, 11,000 calories to divide into six days, right? To, and you're cool. You're still in a deficit. So what this does, this flexibility, um, I'll answer that in a second, right? What this does, our flexibility, is it allows you to have higher calorie days, sometimes lower calorie days and just roll with the punches. And here's a good example. This is something I use on my clients, okay? Saturday and Sunday, I've got clients I work with at like a couple of beers. They work hard in the week, successful guys, driven guys. On the weekends, they have a couple of beers. Now, I'm not talking get pissed up, drink under the table type thing. They just like to have a couple of beers, go out for a meal. So let's say their calories are slightly higher on the weekend. Hey, no problem, okay? What we're gonna do on Mondays, we're gonna bring them back with a strategic intermittent fast, bit of a long fast when they're busy, they don't realize they're hungry or maybe they're not because their glycogen stores, stores are topped up from the weekend. And then we bring their calories back into balance. So they can have slightly higher calories on the weekend, but then just pull it back on a Monday and then even it out throughout the rest of the week. This is the beautiful thing of using the flexible dieting approach. It's adaptable and you can roll with it, okay? You have a day where your movement is lower. You have a day where you're neat, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, the calories you burn on a day-to-day -day basis just moving is lower. You can just bring your calories down, okay? So, final point coming up, but let's just have a recap. Number one, you might have failed because you've been too restrictive on yourself. Number two, you didn't reverse engineer. So the plan, you 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 didn't put a date in of what you wanted to lose. You didn't work out that much over the course of a week. Um, and number three, you didn't have an adaptable plan, okay? You didn't have an adaptable plan that you could roll with. Now, this one I think is going to give you the greatest value before I sign off tonight, guys, okay? And it's something you might not think about. Securing your danger areas. Now, what do I mean by that, right? So first off, it's very easy to go, yeah, I'm pumped up, it's a new year, I'm going to crush it, blah 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 all that bullshit, right? Get to a Saturday night and you're tired, you've had a long day at work, maybe the kids have been playing up, um, but you're just fucking, you've had an unexpected credit card bill in the post. Life, it's called life, right? Things happen, okay? It's very easy to revert back to type. I'm going to have a few drinks, I'm going to have a Chinese, then you feel guilty on the Sunday, and then you overeat, and then you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, starting again on the Monday, okay? So, protecting your danger areas, okay? I want you to understand this. Like, if you truly want to change, you need to make a conscious effort. But you also need to put things in place that are going to protect these areas. So, um, my danger areas, especially when the kids were younger, 
were the weekends. And I've been, people who know me and my friends and my family, they know this. We had a very tough three years, first three years of kids in and out of hospital, no sleep. Both kids had problems. They're fine now, absolutely fine. Sick, shit, sleep. Uh, it was overwhelming. And I was growing a business, didn't have my business partners at the time, taking a lot of the strain. I was VAT registered, all these things, you know, moved into a bigger house. And the weekends I dreaded because I'd finished coaching. I was like, fuck, I'm just sat in the house now in two toddlers, shitting, screaming, crying. And basically my danger area would be on a Saturday night. I could sit up, have a few cans, maybe have a few more. By the time I've had eight or nine cans, I'm in the cheese, I'm eating crap. I know I'm going to be up early, the kids are going to wake me up, I'm going to be stressed, I'm going to be tired, but I do it anyway, because I'm in sabotage mode and I'm tired, okay? Then you'd wake up on a Sunday, think, should I do Should I do some training? Oh, I can't be arsed. And then you'd overeat on a Sunday. And the, re the weekends were basically ruining anything that I did in the week, okay? So it didn't matter what deficit, how much training I did with my clients, the weekends is where I'd sabotage, okay? So... What did I do about two years ago, okay? There's a couple of things I started doing, okay? Exactly, right? So, listen, I don't want you to say you can't have a life, but I'm happy having a couple of beers, right? But it's if you've got nothing to get up for in the morning, this is where the danger lies, all right? So two things I started doing. I committed initially to training with two friends on a Sunday morning. If I'm going to commit to doing these half marathons, I need to basically reduce the alcohol on a, Sunday, on a Saturday night. So I'd have a commitment every Sunday morning, 8 a.m., meeting Brian and Tony in the gym. Boom. What that did for me on a Saturday is it secured off, it locked off my danger. That was a difference between me having three cans or eight cans of beer, okay? So three cans, fine, got the same amount of buzz, but I'd go to bed at a decent time. And I'd get up and I'd be able to train in the morning with my friends, no problem. What then I then decided to do to take it on a step further was introduce live workouts on a Saturday and Sunday, initially on a Saturday for 30 plus men's fitness. Okay, so I identified um, there's a gap in the market to serve our, cl our clients a bit better, train with Tregs on a Saturday, but also selfishly, because you've got to put your, you've got to look after number one. I thought to myself, if I've got a live workout at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning with all these people on my fan page, there's two things. I'll go to bed a little bit earlier. Okay. And secondly, I've got to keep on point. I don't want to feel like shit. I don't want to wake up, feel like shit. Um, and there was always a temptation to drink on a Friday night. Like even if I was coaching Saturday morning, it wouldn't matter. Lads know me. It's all cool. We've all, you know, done our, done our, our job a bit hungover. So I put something in place. So now when I was getting home on a Friday, I was going, well, I can have a glass of wine, but I'm not going to have a bottle or a couple of beers because actually I've got to get up tomorrow and it's not just training the lads. I've got to be there half an hour earlier. Plus I've got to do a workout. I don't want to be dying, hanging out of my ass on these workouts. So I put that in place. That then turned into a live on a Sunday. And this nicely coincided with my kids older, six and four now. They sleep like a dream. Okay, So, that's, so all of a sudden I get my sleep back. And I'm like, right, this is great now. I, I no longer feel the need to sabotage because I'm in a good place. I, I'm not dreading the weekends. And, you know, my best friends will know this, but they both play football now. And it's just an absolute game changer. See where I'm going with this. I'm not just talking about myself. So now on a, on a weekend, whereas my danger areas were very open for me to expose myself, yeah, I could get up and coach on a Saturday morning a little bit rough, but I'm outside with the lads. We have brekkie afterwards, no problem. It wasn't an early start. It's like 8.30. Sunday, nothing on at all. Licensed to just get pissed up on a Saturday night, stay in bed, feel rough, and just bumble around the house on a Sunday. All of a sudden, this is gone. I've got my son's football at half past eight on a Saturday morning. I've got my other son's football at quarter to ten on a Sunday morning. I've also committed to doing the live workouts, so I've now got to do the live workouts before these. So 7.30 a.m. Saturday morning is a live workout. 8.45 a.m. on a Sunday is a live workout. What this has done is totally just battened down the hatches of any dangers of me sabotaging myself. Because I'm not getting up hungover to, try to go on kids' footy and I don't want to be rough to do my live. I've done my live rough. It's fucking hard graft. I've puked on camera many a time. So how does this relate to you? Well, you either join our members club, 20 pounds a month and train with me every weekend, or you put something in place, which is going to secure your danger. So when's your danger area? Saturday night, Sunday night, Friday night, put something in place. If you truly want to change, then you're going to have to do this. Maybe meet a friend for a run, go on a bike ride, 
commit to playing a football, I don't know, a game of squash on a Saturday morning, whatever it is, put something in place. Because if you truly want to change and you've identified there's danger areas, this is going to be a game changer for you. Now, I'm not saying don't have a beer on a Saturday night. I have a beer most Saturday nights. But guess what? I'll have three, go to bed. And that's fine. And I perfectly enjoyed that. And I feel good. Wake up at at nine o'clock but it's my it's like my insurance policy it, it ensures that i'm not going to stay up till one in the morning like heavily boozing because i want to get up i want to train on a live and i want to go to my kids football okay so how can this relate back to you where are you doing the most damage to yourself that you almost feel is a little bit out of your control like i want to change but i'm finding this really really hard Okay, so what can you put in place just to batten down the hatches? Not that you can't enjoy yourself, but just to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. Okay, only you will know the answer to this. I don't know your schedule. So listen, guys, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with that. That's quite a long live. Just a one little recap why you may have failed this year. You put too much restriction on yourself. Don't get me wrong. Some people need a slight period of restriction. Like the guys on the 14-day Transform Yourself program are being introduced to a very sort of a cleaner way of eating and no real let up or flexibility because they need to. It's a 14 day blast. And as we move you on, we'll give you more education. Number two is um, you didn't reverse engineer. You said, I want to lose this much, but you didn't even work, you didn't work it out how long that's going to take you. So what, when do you want to lose the weight by? What date? What date? Now let's work back and let's do the maths. Okay. Number three was it was an adaptable. You didn't have an adaptable nutrition plan. So if you had a biscuit on a Tuesday, think, fuck, I've blown it and then binge till Monday. OK, have a get into flexible diet and I can help you with that. OK, yeah, you eat clean 85 percent of the time, but you track your calories so you can go and have a, a biscuit or half a lager or, or something like that. OK, that it just keeps you sane and avoid you collapsing into overeating things that you deem as bad because they're not the dangers of dosage. Um, and number four put these things in place like batten down the hatches i was i was having a chat with ozzy and brian who are my coaches and i said it's been a real breakthrough year for me because um for the first time and i'll be completely honest i have all my battles as a as a pt over the years especially when the kids come along i feel i've got the 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 the, the, the areas sort of boxed off i'm up early to coach most most days so you won't catch me drinking excessively in the week or anything like that um but the weekends they are they are just boxed. They're they're boxed off with um the kids' football, the lives, and it's it's actually it's not like people might go, well, oh, you've put a lot on yourself on the weekends, but it's not. The biggest reward is getting up, doing the training, and then going up to football with my kids. That's actually much better for me than having eight cans on a Saturday night. I'd rather have three and then feel better for, for the lives on a Sunday. So um. So hope this gives you some value, guys. I've put a lot of thought into this one today. And uh, yeah, hope you get some value. Go away, have a think about it. And anyone that you know might have struggled this year, might have failed, just, just tag them in or just send them it. It can be subtle, okay? Hopefully it's going to give you some value. Guys, keep trucking. Have a lovely evening. I'll talk to you soon.